Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about the now famous and very interesting magnetar located in the Milky Way galaxy, approximately 30,000 light years away from us. The magnetar that became extremely important because we've detected fast radio bursts coming from this object. And this was the first time ever we found the mysterious FRBs coming from our own galaxy. But now we've also discovered something else unusual about it, something that was predicted by at least one paper. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, because it does look like we might be able to finally solve at least one cosmological mystery, the mystery of the fast radio bursts. But first of all, a quick recap. Back in 2007, we discovered these unusual phenomena we now currently refer to as fast radio bursts, mostly because they're extremely fast, usually much, much shorter than even one second. They also seem to come from all over the place and there seem to be a lot of them at all times, with some predictions being roughly around 20,000 per year, and all of them coming from some really, really highly energetic events. Something that's way more powerful than, for example, the beautiful aurora events that normally produce radio waves as well, but something that's way, way less powerful than a supernova or some other major explosion. And so for the past decade, a lot of questions have been asked, a lot of propositions have been made, but no definitive conclusions have been made so far. And for this reason, um, even a very specialized observatory has been built in Canada known as CHIME, which is what you see right here. An extremely sophisticated radio observatory that essentially is trying to solve the mystery of the radio bursts, but also is trying to discover some other unusual radio signals. And their website actually has some really, really cool pictures you can take a look at, at how the observatory operates and essentially what they do there to begin with. But anyway, back to FRBs. So in the past decade, we've discovered that some of them seem to be repetitive. Some of them even seem to be cyclical and you can actually even predict their appearance. But the vast majority so far have been singular events. They only happen once and never repeated at all. And because of these unusual properties, it's been really difficult to kind of understand what's causing them. But the biggest culprits have always been magnetars, the extremely, extremely massive, very dense and extremely high in magnetic field neutron stars that are known for the exotic conditions they create on their surfaces. For example, we know that the magnetic field here is so ridiculously strong, usually about a thousand times stronger than a typical neutron star and quadrillions of times stronger than anything we have on planet Earth which as a result creates some really strange effects on the surface. So even though the gravity is pushing everything inside the neutron star, the magnetic field is trying to pull it all out. And because of this, there are a lot of different uh, unusual effects and unusual deformities that happen on the surface of the neutron star, which usually results in extremely powerful X-ray emissions coming from the surface. And these emissions are not really unusual, but some scientists suggested that when, for example, certain types of matter, like for example, imagine just a typical asteroid, collide with a neutron star, they might produce some other extreme effects. Effects that could be not so different from radio bursts that we've been observing since 2007. But honestly, when it comes to magnetars, there are still so many other questions. Like for example, we're still not entirely sure how they're produced. At least one recent study suggested that maybe they're produced when two neutron stars of a specific mass collide in such a way that instead of a black hole, a magnetar is made. Other suggestions have been in regards to stars of an extremely specific mass going supernova and leaving behind not a typical neutron star or a black hole, but an extremely magnetic neutron star, which of course is a magnetar. And other studies evoked some other exotic explanations. So magnetars are definitely mysterious, but at the same time, the mathematics we currently have of magnetars is just enough for us to start predicting what would happen if something did collide with such an object. And one of the studies that I mentioned a few months ago, the one that should be popping up somewhere on the screen, discussed the idea and the mathematics behind a collision of an asteroid or small rock with a magnetar and the effects that will be produced on the surface as a result of this collision. And a lot of the predictions involved essentially a fast radio burst with additional weaker FRBs in the following months. Which just as it happens is exactly what we've recently discovered and confirmed with several different observations around the planet. But interestingly enough, yet another additional FRB was observed from uh, this location only a few weeks ago from when I'm making this video. And so along with the previous observation of the FRBs made back in May of 2020, this officially designates this unusual magnetar we have in the Milky Way as a source of repeating FRBs, thus helping us explain how they could possibly be forming in other regions of the universe as well. 
And interestingly, the recent observations from October of 2020 are very similar to the original observations back in April, which, as predicted in the paper from back in May of 2020, can be actually explained by an asteroid that was spaghettified in such a way that the difference between the initial and the last impact would be roughly around 1.4 seconds, with additional weaker impacts then causing the weaker FRBs we observed a few weeks later. In other words, what all this suggests is that it's quite likely that what we're observing here is essentially a bunch of asteroids or a bunch of rocks in very, very tight orbits slowly coming closer and closer to the neutron star and eventually colliding with it, causing the unusual effects we're observing from planet Earth. Although currently that's just one of many explanations. There could be also a lot of other explanations related to just the deformalities of the neutron star itself due to various magnetic effects. Or possibly something completely different that we haven't thought about just yet. Maybe it's just related to some kind of a gas or plasma forming around the neutron star and causing disturbances that then produce these radio bursts. In other words, the reasons for this are still not entirely clear and still haven't really been definitively proven. But what is clear is that some neutron stars, some magnetars, can produce FRBs after all, and some of them can also cause repeated FRBs, which is maybe what we're observing coming from other galaxies. Although here it's also important to understand that what we observe from our own Milky Way and what we usually observe coming from other galaxies has completely different values in terms of strength. The recently observed local FRB from Milky Way galaxy is extremely weak in comparison to all of these other FRBs we've been observing coming from millions of light years away from us. So there could be something else going on in these other galaxies or maybe the FRBs coming from distant galaxies are just coming from much, much younger magnetars that are extremely powerful in comparison to what we have here in the Milky Way. So in short, the mystery is still a bit of a mystery, but we're just getting closer and closer to solving it. And when it comes to cosmological mysteries, that's actually a big deal. We still haven't really solved the dark matter or the dark energy mysteries. We also haven't solved mysteries of a lot of other signals, but we are slowly getting closer to solving the mystery of the unusual FRB signals we're observing across the universe. Either way though, there are still a lot of new things we're going to be discovering about FRBs in the coming months. And there have already been several different other signals coming from other regions of the universe that have been discovered in the past few months as well. But to me personally, it's been kind of an amazing journey just to see how we went from only just seeing the signals approximately 12 years ago for the first time and having no idea whatsoever what caused them to now actually having an observatory specializing in these signals and having several major theories and explanations for what's possibly causing them while also detecting a lot of them pretty much every single year. And this is essentially science at work. It starts with an unusual observation, a lot of different ideas and potential propositions, and eventually leads to a theory and a solid explanation. So we're not there yet, but we're getting closer and closer to that final solution. But for now, unfortunately, that's all I wanted to mention. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below, where you can also find all of the studies and additional resources to learn more about this unusual phenomenon. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.